able to partner with HUD on. Um, and as Bernita mentioned, it will include an opportunity to access some free books. Next slide. We'll dive right in. Okay. So first book, we are a national nonprofit social enterprise, and we provide books and other educational resources to educators and everyone and any other organization, program that works with children and families in need. Um, the whole part of our big mission is to transform the lives and elevate the quality of education for children in need everywhere. Um, next slide, please. So this slide, you'll see um, first books reach an impact. So just to give you um, an idea of our scale, we've to date distributed over 150 million books and resources. Uh, we have a network of over 275,000 educators and program leaders all across the country serving children in need. Um, we also have distributed books in over 30 countries. So we are not only here in the US, but we also work internationally as well. And our reach is generally about 3 million children annually, and we are always looking to continue to grow that reach uh, through new memberships and new partnerships. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I just mentioned about how we serve about 3 million children annually through our network, and uh, this slide here is going to show you the need about um, about how many and about the need about um, excuse me about about the need for uh, children and low income children and classrooms that do not have access to uh, resources. So you see here um, there is a large number of low-income children. More than half of the children who attend public schools in the U.S. live in low-income house, households. Um, there's a lack of resources, so two-thirds of those families don't even have books, and many of them fall behind. So, it's, so essentially, it continues the impact and it continues the cycle of poverty for children who are born into low-income households. And we provide their educators and the other programs that they're attending with the resources that they need to break that. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide you'll see um, there's, a, there's information out there and data that shows that in the, the drastic difference between access to books within children from low-income communities versus upper-middle-income communities, in lower income communities, there is often um, there is a study that showed in some of the most uh, the most the most neediest communities that there is only one book one one high quality children's book per 300 children in um, in a low income community versus 13 books per child in an upper and middle income community. And um, below you'll see what the impact of that lack of access to books ends up um, the effects of that. So over 80% of children in low-income communities do not read at grade level, and over 25% won't graduate from high school versus about 50% from an upper or middle-income community that uh, read a little bit below grade level, and only about less than 10% will not graduate from high school. So those two, you know, that data just essentially shows about how the cycle of poverty continues um, through, excuse me, through um, through through the lack of access to educational materials. Um, next slide, please. As Monica just pointed out, you know the lack of access is really critical. And just to kind of build on the last words Monica shared, the research, uh, most recent research that we're um, looking to right now is actually kind of encouraging when it shows how we can impact educational outcomes for children. You know, there was a time, and probably many of us were working in the field of um, serving low-income families when, when we thought about a child's educational attainment as most closely tied to the education of his or her mother. And for those of us who were working in the field, I know for myself, sometimes that felt a little discouraging because no matter how much we were encouraging and promoting high-quality environments for children, if their fate was sort of already sealed based on the education of their mother, um, you know, it felt a little hard to overcome. And so what's really encouraging about some of the most recent research is that a child's educational attainment is now most closely tied 
to the number of books that they have in their home. So if a child is being raised in a book in a, a home that is filled with 500 books, then that is that levels it out. When you measure for race and socioeconomic status, that basically you can project for that child that they have um, educational attainment on par with kids who are raised with two college-educated parents. And you can imagine at First Book we find that really encouraging because our mission is to get books into the hands of kids. And so, you know, we work at two levels. We work to make sure that the kids have ongoing access um, in their homes and books that they can own themselves. But we know it's also really important to make sure that the educators, and we use educators very broadly, um, the adults who are working with these children have access to resources too because it's, um, you know, they go hand in hand. When programs are working in under-resourced communities, those programs themselves are often under-resourced. So by combining access to books for kids that they can keep and access to books and educational resources for educators, we're really able to amplify the impact that First Book creates. Next slide, please. So I'll talk a little bit about our impact model. And it, it, um, it rests on these three sort of components, aggregating, listening, and responding. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. Next slide, please. So if we think about the socioeconomic pyramid, the folks that First Book is aiming to serve are really the folks who are living or serving in the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid. And one of the most powerful things about the way First Book works is um, through our network, which Monica will talk a little bit more about how educators join the First Book network, we're able to aggregate the voices of hundreds of thousands of educators across the country. So really lifting up that voice that shares what the needs are in the community which you know, we're really excited to say is starting to cause um, a ripple and really starting to, to catch the ear of thought leaders and, and policymakers across the country because it's not the voices in Chicago expressing the need and the voices in St. Louis expressing a need and the voices in Palo Alto, California expressing a need. It's everyone together aggregating that voice and really amplifying it through sharing information with the first book. Um, through the First Book Network, what we call the feedback loop. And so what we do is listen to the educators to really understand the need. Um, we often survey our network. Educators that are working with First Book are connected to our resources. Um, we do focus groups at conferences and try to understand what those needs are and then really go out and, and create um, solutions to those needs to find free and low-cost resources that will help educators address the needs of the children and families that they serve. And so then eventually what we're aiming to do is create equal access to quality education that those at the top of the socioeconomic pyramid take for granted, and those at the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid um, often find out of reach. Next slide. OK. So Candace did mention a little bit about our network, and we talked about it a little bit earlier that we currently have a network of over 275,000 educators and program leaders registered with First Book. So just to tell you about who can sign up with First Book, it really is anyone who touches the lives of children and families in need. So that could be not just teachers and educators in Title I schools, but it also includes early childhood programs, libraries and museums, uh, non profit organizations such as Boys and Girls Club, YNCA, um, after school programs, and of course public housing authorities and any other organization or entity that, ch that touches the lives of children and families in need. And uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And so just to, just to tell you a little bit about the, uh, be the benefits of membership, um, once you are a member, you are able to connect with our resources, which include not just books, but we also have other resources as well. Um, you're able to maximize any of the funding that you that you do have for programs that do have funding. You're able to purchase any of our resources for up to 90% off. In addition, you're able to help influence the type of products that we do carry. So. We end up, um, like Candace was mentioning, that we do a lot of surveys of our network. And so within the surveys, 
that's how we've been able to expand our marketplace from just books. We also expanded um, just, to fit, just to fit the needs of what our network is really asking for um, to really support all the work that you're doing in the classroom, in your programs, in wherever you are working with the children and families in need. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. And so I was talking a little bit about the data that we uh, collect from folks, which happens through which, which through the data that we've collected, we found that there are three critical areas of need. Having access to high quality resources at low prices, having diverse and culturally appropriate content, as well as a range of additional resources beyond books. So we have expanded beyond books, which to just to give you a quick overview of what it includes, um, some coats, uh, technology resources, and other items that we've been told by our network that really um, would really support their work and really support what their um, and really support their the children and families that they serve. Um, so we have two distribution models, which uh, you can see on the next slide, please. Okay. So our two distribution models include the First Book Marketplace and the National Book Bank. So on the First Book Marketplace, we have over 6,000 titles of brand new books available for children of all ages, 0 through 18. We also, on the Marketplace, all of our books, like I said, are brand new. The average cost is about $3, which includes the price of shipping and handling. And you can order as many or as few books and resources as you would like from the Marketplace. Uh, the National Book Bank includes uh, primarily books. Um, primarily books available in full cartons and are, and are brand new books that are donated by publishers. And with those books, the cost is generally free. However, you do have to pay a small shipping fee, which averages around 75 cents per book. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So just to tell you a little bit more about the marketplace, the marketplace, uh, it's aggregates a new market of 275,000 educators serving kids in need. So that's how we've been, so I mentioned us expanding from just books and so that's how, that's where we put all of our additional resources as well as on the marketplace to, so that way educators and other members have access to all of those resources whenever, whenever, whenever they need to place orders. In addition, uh, we focus on books that reflect children of all backgrounds as well as all different, um, excuse me, as, all, as well as all different um, life experiences as well as books that feature uh, fiction and nonfiction. So we do have a wide variety of over 6,000 titles available on the marketplace. Um, next slide, please. So I mentioned how we had additional resources besides just books. So you'll see um, at the bottom of the slide, which it includes digital learning items, school supplies, clothing, hands-on learning items, school supplies, basic needs, which include uh, clothing, uh, uh, hygienic products, things that a lot of educators and a lot of our members have reported that they needed to help support their students and the children that they serve. And on the top of the slide, you'll see um, some of the other some, just a few of the topics that we have that are covered with the books that we carry on the marketplace to include diversity, uh, STEM, environmental resources, financial literacy, and 21st century skills. And we uh, include books like that on our marketplace because that's what a lot of our network was expressing that they needed in order to support their programming and their, um, support their programming and their students. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and so just to tell you a little bit more about the National Book Bank, which is our other model, uh, the National Book Bank is the only clearinghouse for donated books and inventory in North America. We work with over 90 different publishers to, excuse me, to stock the books that we have on our, to, to stock the books we have on our uh, National Book Bank. So essentially the way that that works is publishers donate their excess inventory to First Book. And these are generally books that are very good, high quality books. However, they just haven't sold for a variety of reasons. Either they've printed too many or they just weren't able to get them out. So 
once the books are donated to us, we make those available to our network, and the network uh, members are able to choose whichever books they see are the most appropriate for their students and for the children that they're serving. And once they've selected their books, we ship the books, and then you just pay a small shipping fee, like I said, which usually is a, around 75 cents per book, uh, depending on the distribution. So um, the National Book Bank distributes about 8 to 10 million books per year, and it, the books are books that children love to read, are very high interest books that children are able to take home and begin building their home library with. And we are, and you know, we always hear great feedback from our educators about how the books get kids excited for reading and how they are just super thrilled to have a book that they can call their own. Um, next slide, please. I want to take a few minutes to focus on one of First Book's key um, special initiatives, the Stories for All project, which we launched in 2013 at the Clinton Global Initiative. And this was really rooted in feedback from the network and also what we were seeing um, through our, our um, partnerships with publishers that was really demonstrating how the, the retail publishing market um, was not reflecting not only um, the citizens of the United States, the residents of the United States, but certainly not the kids in our network. And so this was really our commitment to increase access to diversity in children's literature. Um, the Stories for All project now has over 500 titles, and the title, or now we are, sorry, it's over 2,000 titles. It grows every time I look at it. Um, some of the great titles are not just um, representing cultural and um, racial diversity, but things like family structures and neighborhoods and life circumstances and things that we know um, kids in being served by our network are experiencing. And there's a lot of um, research that points to how when children are able to see themselves in a book, it's more likely to encourage them to read and develop a love of reading. Um, we like to call this phenomenon kind of the windows and mirrors. So children deserve to see themselves in a book, and they deserve to look outside of their own life experiences. So that creates the windows piece of it, to build empathy or to build excitement or to build imagination. And so the Stories for All project really focuses on our commitment to diversity. And I wanted to call out this one title in particular because I think it's just a great representation of how um, diverse the books are in, in this um, collection. So um, I don't know how many on the line here are familiar with Knock Knock, um, My Dad's Dream for Me. But it is a beautiful, beautiful picture book written by Daniel Beatty. And you'll see the uh, first book, um, what's that called, medallion on it. Um, because we were able to work with the publisher and create this book in paperback for the first time ever, which drives the cost down and makes it more accessible to our network. And the reason that was so important to us is because this book really is, um, I mean, it's gold standard in terms of what you wouldn't necessarily see if you're walking through Barnes & Noble, um, kind of the, the typical retail um, book experience. But this beautiful book depicts um, from a little boy's voice routines and loving, caring interactions that he had with his father growing up. And then one day his father doesn't come home. And so the rest of the book is kind of him growing up and reconciling in his own mind. How is he going to live into those dreams that he knows his father had for him, even though his father isn't present? And it's this just incredibly moving, powerful journey through this beautifully illustrated book. And if you read the author's note at the end, Daniel Beatty talks about how he lost his father during his childhood to incarceration, and that that really shaped his life. And this really does kind of chronicle his experience of reconciling his life and how he wants to grow into being a man when his father wasn't there. And we know that that is a reality for far too many children, especially far too many children that we all reach. And those children deserve to have their life experiences celebrated and validated in beautiful children's books. I think, you know, so often kids experiencing this type of um, life experience feel shamed or feel, um, you know, 
scared or alone. And this kind of thing is just one example of the types of stories that can be found in the Stories for All project to really help children connect to reading and connect to books and validate their own life experiences. Next slide. OK. So how Candace was previously talking about how there's a lack of diversity in the books that are published by the children's books that are published by the publishing industry. This uh, this graphic here, this infographic here, just shows in 2012 uh, the the lack of diversity that uh, the publishing industry really had as far as children's books. When they did a study of, I believe, it was about 3,500 books or so, uh, the study of five, of 3,500 books showed that. Uh, over 93%, and they took out books that the primary characters were focused on animals, but when you had uh, human characters as the primary characters in the book, over 93% of the characters in the book featured white children or white characters, whereas the other 7% was divided amongst African Americans, Latinos, Native Americans, and Asian and Pacific Island Americans. So. Um, you know, just that so many children weren't able to see themselves in that many books or weren't able to see about different experiences in other books. It was just, um, it really sparked our commitment to uh, making sure that all of the children that we reach and that are, and excuse me, all the children that our network reaches are able to have, as she mentioned, both windows and mirrors to see the experiences of all children everywhere. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so our record of success. So we're just going to talk about how we have, um, you know, we mentioned that we do collect a lot of data from our network, which not only drives the content that we provide, but it also informs us of how we know that what we're providing and the resources that we're providing is actually working. And it's really making a difference with the educators and program leaders that we serve. Uh, next, next slide, please. Okay, so we know that the model works. And we know this because when we surveyed our members, we found that many of them were able to have additional resources that they didn't have before or didn't have access to before, which not only includes just books, but the other resources that we had before. And in addition, we know that, our, that the books that we provide help teachers when children are able to have brand new books. They get more excited for reading. They're eager they're excited, and they're able to have such a variety of books to where it helps to increase their interest in reading. It also helps to close the achievement gap for the children that they serve. And a lot of educators say that our resources help them to be the best educators that they can be. So we, um, you know, just from hearing that from our members through surveys and as well as even just talking with a lot of our members that we encounter when we are doing outreach, we know that it's working, so that definitely is a huge, huge motivator for us. And we are just really excited about that. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll take just a couple of minutes to highlight some of the ways that we've partnered with housing authorities and housing communities to date, and then cover the specific opportunity that we have for folks on the line today. Next slide. So before I kind of cover some of these specific examples, I'm going to take a minute to talk a little bit about how you join the First Book Network. So it's an online process that is absolutely free. Um, we'll show you the registration link when we get towards the end of this presentation here, but it's about a five or ten minute um, process where we ask folks to verify their eligibility to be part of the First Book Network. And so the resources that Monica talked about, the marketplace and the book bank, are available exclusively to programs in our network. And that means programs that are either Title I or Title I eligible, Head Start, Federally Qualified Health Clinic, programs for military families or children with special needs, um, Title VII funded communities, or any program serving at least 70% children from low-income families. So if 7 out of 10 of the children in your program live in low-income families, you are eligible to register with First Book. And we encourage every individual in an eligible organization to register so that there are multiple eyes on opportunities um, like the ones that we'll share 
in just a few minutes. But registration is completely free. There's absolutely no obligation. Um, we don't share your information with anyone. The information that we do capture is really strictly just so that we can verify to our publishing partners that we're upholding our end of the agreement, which is we are only offering these incredibly low prices and these free resources to under-resourced communities. And as you might imagine, housing authorities are a great part of that network of 275,000 individuals um, because these are places where we know 100% of the families you're serving are low income. Um, and just to look at a couple of brief examples, ways that we've been able to help housing authorities really create impact in their community um, include doing things like working with the Alexandria Housing Authority, who decided that they were going to do their very best, with, as funding allowed, to use books as gifts for children and families at a variety of touch points throughout the year. So wherever your residents are interacting with you and your staff, those are places that the Housing Authority wanted to provide a book. Um, this was terrific because it helped build relationships, it helped get books to the, into low-income homes, and it helped children really develop a love of reading. We've worked with the Dallas Housing Authority in a number of different ways, and we're excited for the second year to go back to Chicago. In October, we'll be there at their Operation Warm um, event, where we'll be distributing nearly 20,000 books um, in a, um, a great community um, gathering convening where residents will be also receiving free coats from Operation Warm for their children, as well as health screenings and other um, community-based services. So we're really excited to do that. Next slide, please. Some of the ways that we've heard that um, housing authorities are incorporating books into their programs include hosting family reading nights or reading parties, incentivizing parents and families to show up for events by offering books when they do. A number of offices have set up reading corners, either in their after school room or early childhood room or in the office. Um, they've formed book clubs or hold reading workshops for parents, so bringing in community partners who help parents understand things like you don't have to be highly literate to enjoy a book with your child. You can sit close to them and even just the act of holding the book in the right direction and turning the pages from left to right and pointing out pictures and thinking about sounds of the pictures, all of those are developing literacy skills. And so a lot of times, um, you know, we hear from a lot of the programs that we work with that parents are reluctant to read books with their children because they feel like their literacy level isn't high enough to do that. And so um, we've heard great stories from a number of housing authorities who have invited community organizations in to work with their parents and encourage reading in the home. We know that a lot of folks are incorporating books into professional development um, activities, and like our friends at the Alexandria Housing Authority, helping families build home libraries as well. Next slide. So this brings us to the very special opportunity that we have for housing authorities today. Um, one of the benefits of being registered with the First Books Network or participating in um, events and activities like this is we are able to share resources with you as we receive them as well. So while we're working with our publishing partners to make sure we're driving down the cost and offering the very lowest prices on the First Book Marketplace or providing a distribution channel for the free books through the book bank, um, we also have a team of folks over here who are working to develop um, corporate relationships with folks like Blue and Target and KPMG who are really interested in making sure that kids have um, high quality educational opportunities. And when they do that, oftentimes they provide funding that we are then able to share with our network. So we know of the 275,000 educators in our network, at least a third of them have zero budget for books. And I would imagine that a lot of housing authorities are probably in that same camp. If you're not a classroom, it's not an integral part of your built-in budget necessarily. Um, and so what we're able to do is create opportunities so that folks like you who are working with families and care about promoting education can still access the resources that we have. The opportunity that I want to talk about today is specifically focused on our Mind in the Making collection. Some of you, if you're familiar with early childhood especially, may know of Ellen Galinsky's work and may have heard of her book, Mind in the Making, The Seven Essential Life Skills Every Child Needs. Um, but this is a, a book that really synthesizes all of the most recent brain research 
um, child development brain research and looked at why are some children succeeding and overcoming challenges while some children aren't. What is it that those kids who overcome challenges have that um, that's lacking in the children who aren't able to come to overcome um, barriers? And what the research what the research bore out is that executive function skills are really key, if not more important, than reading and writing and math skills. And these are the skills that help us um, in all kinds of situations. So things like focus and self-control, communicating, taking on challenges, thinking critically, being self-directed. Um, and so first book in listening to our network and hearing that our network is hungry for research-based, evidence-based, um, resources to support adults reading with children, partnered with Ellen Galinsky and her team to create a collection of children's books, um, primarily focused on kids 0 to 8, but we've since expanded to include titles that are appropriate for children ages 9 to 12, um, but basically titles that can be mapped back to each of these seven skills. And then Ellen Galinsky and her team of executive function experts created tip sheets for us. They're available in English and Spanish. They're completely free. And they help adults reading with a child to intentionally um, promote the related executive function skill. So if we're looking at the top right corner, Fish is Fish by Leo Leone, that's a great book to read with children to help them develop perspective taking skills. And if you're an adult using the tip sheet that is free and downloadable from the marketplace, it would guide you with questions and word games and conversation starters to really help children start to flex that muscle of perspective taking. And so um, now there are 98 books in that collection. And every title has its own individual tip sheet that is free and available on the marketplace, as well as through the Mind in the Making um, website. Next slide, please. And so through our partnership with Ellen Galinsky um, that allowed us to expand this collection and create these tip sheets, we also got funding to share with a variety of sectors and partners so that we can make sure these resources get out into the community. And so um, we've got a bucket set aside for um, public housing authorities, public housing communities. And we'd like to offer anyone who wants to raise their hand um, the opportunity to receive a $250 um, promotional code that will provide you with free books from the Mind in the Making collection. So you would, um, once you receive your promotion code, go onto the marketplace, select the books that are most relevant for the kids that, that you have in mind, and um, at purchase, you'll use a promotional code, and that will deduct $250 off of your purchase. So the first important thing to do is make sure that you're registered with First Book. Firstbook.org slash HUD is the link that you can use. And in the next day or so, you'll receive an email um, with instructions about how to use the promotion code. Um, this opportunity, based on the funding that we have available, will be limited to the first 50 um, public housing authorities that raise their hand and register and complete the order. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Monica and see what questions there are or um, if anyone is, is um, able to share if you're already using books or engaging families through books, um, what, that is, um, what that's been like in your community. Or if you have questions about the opportunity that we just shared. Yes, so, um, so as you're thinking about the resources that we were talking about earlier and this great opportunity, we did have a couple of discussion questions and a couple of questions to help you think about the best ways that you can use some of the books is, you know, how would, what, what could you do with greater access to free and low cost, high quality books? Essentially in this case, having the opportunity to use the free Mind of the Making resources, what are some ways that you can use that with the families and the children in your specific community. Um, we did mention a couple of ways that other organizations and other housing authorities have used the books in their communities, so that might be something that sparks um, an idea or 
spark some sort of inspiration as to something that you can use and something that you were looking for to uh, enhance the programming in your community. Um, in addition, in addition, we also have um, what are you already doing that more or different books could complement. So if you are currently doing a program where you do have either um, books or literacy or even just to enhance something else that you're doing that maybe isn't specifically focused on literacy, but for example, like how the Alexandria Housing Authority was already giving out, um, was already giving books out, or all, excuse me, they were already giving out gifts to their families, so they decided to switch it to books. Now that they have books available, or they had books available, they were able to give those out to the families and the children in their community. And also, think about some of your current challenges and what other resources do you need. As we mentioned earlier, we're really looking to um, really gauge the network and to really gauge what people who are in the field really need to support their program and really need to support the children and families that they serve. So we know that a lot of times that there, you know, a lot of people who are working with children and families in need really do need additional resources and we just want to make sure that we can support you in providing resources that you need to um, to really strengthen your programs and to continue and grow your programs to support as many children and families in need as possible within your community. So are there any questions or any here? Thank you, Monica. This is Bernita again. I see that quite a few folks have their hands raised on the line. Okay. And I just wanted to point out that when we say raise your hand, we don't mean yeah. just today <laughs> on the webinar. You would raise your hand by registering with, with First Book and also, um, you want to go over that one more time, Candice? Yeah. So you'll register, make sure that you're registered with First Book and essentially um, by the end of the week, well I guess that's tomorrow, so probably <laughs> within the next day or so, you'll receive an email um, with this opportunity and you'll raise your hand by responding to Monica. You'll see her email at the end of this um, slide deck and um, we can connect you with the promo code and answer any other questions you have at this time. So it'll be a direct connection with Monica after this webinar in response to an email that you'll receive tomorrow. Excellent. And we're also able to take your questions if you type them into the chat and we could also unmute you so that you could voice a question that you might have. So um, if you would like me to unmute you, please raise your hand. Otherwise, you can type your question into the chat. And I'll just say, I'm so excited to know that a number of people have raised their hand. We love knowing that these resources yeah. are going to get right out. Wonderful. So I'm going to unmute Karen. Karen Daver. Karen, your line's unmuted. Do you have a question? No? Okay. Oh, I think we have a few questions coming in. Some people have typed their questions. Um, Serena Jocelyn, she typed, I will be off work tomorrow but back Monday. Can I get the promo code now and log in and use it? So we really want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to use it at the same time. So I would say just keep an eye on your email. I know you're going to be off tomorrow. However, you know, we there are 50 opportunities available. So chances are if you go in Monday, there still might be an opportunity available, but unfortunately, we can't provide it early. Sounds fair. And someone has said they're already registered. Can they still receive the code? Yes, absolutely. If you're already registered, you can receive the code. Um, the only thing we just need you to do is just, if you respond at the end and say, yes, I'm interested, we'll be sure to send it to you. And can I just add to, um, for Serena, you know, if there is someone in her office that will be in tomorrow and they're able to um, 
receive the email or if you want to send us um, another email to send it to, right. we're happy to do that um, so that at least someone in your housing authority sees the opportunity in real time. Great. And there's another question about when the PowerPoint will be available. So it will be on the Energy is Everywhere website. It's with, um, it's with the Department of Energy. They manage that website. You can Google it. And it should be available early next week, either Monday or Tuesday. There's a question, how will we know if we are one of the 50? So the, the promotion code is essentially going to work until 50 people have used it. So if when you get to the checkout um, and, the promo code, and the promotion code doesn't work, um, chances are that it might be that uh, you know, so 50 people have used it, or you could always call or um, email our member services team, and they'll be able to tell you if you do find that you are having a problem with the code, whether it's because the, you know, the code has been used, or whether it's because there might be an issue with entering the code or something. So um, our member services team would be able to help with that if you do have any issues with entering the promotion code. And there's a question about if the $250 is off of a total purchase or if you just receive $250 worth of books. It's off of the total purchase of Mind in the Making books. So the $250 will be limited to the titles on the Mind in the Making page, and that, that page link will be provided to you. And you're not limited to only purchasing books from that page, but the promotion code will only discount against books on that page. Excellent. And I had a question also. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for presenting all of the evidence behind the work that you guys are doing. And I was wondering, is there a number of books that begins to move the needle on life outcomes for that's a great question. I love that question. And the number is 20. So, it, you know, 500 is kind of a daunting number, but, you know, 20 is totally doable. And I think, you know, when I think about housing authorities as positioning themselves as community hubs and thinking about the number of different partners, community partners that I know housing authorities work with, you know, I think about how exciting would it be if everyone got around the table for their, you know, monthly meeting or whatever your format is, and everyone committed to finding the funding to make sure that, you know, children that they serve together each receive two, three, whatever the number is from each of those partners. And the, the lift is shared and the collaboration is shared, um, but the children still get the benefit and the, the lift is not only on one organization. I know a lot of community foundations have supported that kind of effort in the past. Going through the questions here. Someone said that they are registered. However, when they try to log in, they get a message telling them they have they don't have a confirmed account, and they've asked for another email. So is this something that they would reach out to technical? Yes, this would be a member services question. So if you reach out to our member services team, um, either by phone or email, they would be able to help you with that. Um, and they are always available pretty well. They're available from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday uh, by phone, but you can email at any time. And they're very quick with their response by email. And by phone, if you call during one of those hours, they're there and they're available to answer your questions. And they do so very well and very quickly. Great. And I'm also getting a few questions here about whether or not the mini grant covers shipping and handling. Yes, it does cover the shipping and handling. So on our marketplace, all of the books, um, as long as your order is over $75, there's no additional shipping and handling charge. The shipping is and shipping and handling is included. Excellent. OK, I'm going to try to see if maybe we can take another call over the phone. So Bev Moore, I noticed that was one of your questions. Would you like to ask 
Monica or Ken has a question. I, I would. Hi, Bev. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I couldn't write all this, but I didn't know what to expect when I um, called in or when I entered the webinar. Uh, you all are wonderful, and I thank you for being there. We had a program we started this summer that I believe you will help us to move forward. I thought we were going to have to end it. We have, oh. uh, so, I did. We had um, a grant given to us, and I'm from the Allegheny County Housing Authority, and a grant was given to us. We started bringing in people like our county exec executive to read the Lorax book to our children. And then we uh, went on with letting a board member do it and, you know, letting our ED do it. And, and we wanted to continue that because each time we do it, we give the kids a book as a gift. Mm -hmm. Your program is going to allow us or allow me to keep going with that and be able to give the kids uh, the books. I love the Ellen uh, Galinsky series. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm looking forward to being able to register, and when we get done, I'm going to register. But I just wanted to commend you, Candace, and to commend you. Um, wait, I, I lost the name. Monica. Monica, thank you so much, because it's something that's so sorely needed. I'm an educator also, but I taught um, in uh, Carlo University. But you get your foundation with the children. And oh. you, you will give us an opportunity to do this. So I've never heard of you before, but now that I've heard of you, I'm going to be using this. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Beth. That, that, is, that just makes our day. That's yeah. why we get out of bed in the morning. And it's so great to know that, you know, no matter how much we're growing or how fast we're growing, there are still new folks that we can reach so that we can continue to help you create impact. Thanks for all that you do. Yes, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bev. And we are almost done with our time together, unfortunately. Um, I just had one more question for uh, you ladies. Mm -hmm. Are there any resources accessible completely free for those who register with you? You mentioned the fact sheets are free with the books. But if you mm -hmm. aren't interested in the Mind in the Making collection, are there any other free resources you could take advantage of? So I will say that once you register with First Books, we oftentimes will have funding like this that does come up, not just for the mind of the making, but general funding for uh, members who are in different locations, for members who are looking for a variety of different books. So I would say once you register, keep an eye on your email because that's how you will find out about additional funding opportunities um, that are available in your area or even just at different times. And we have lots of um, partners that we work with, for both corporate partners as well as nonprofit partners who do uh, work with us to provide funding for members in our network. And those opportunities come up pretty regularly, so mm -hmm. you'll probably see them come across your email really soon. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, once you register, if you go onto the marketplace, there's a tab at the far right side on the top that's just labeled free resources. Mm -hmm. And in addition to Mind in the Making, we have a number of collections that we've curated, again, based on feedback from the network where we've worked with um, sector thought leaders and content experts to craft these um, free downloadable tip sheets that support reading aloud with children. And so the books are varying, um, the, the collections are varying topics like family strengths, how do you support strong family assets, or um, 21st century learning skills. There's a, a collection of books that focus on you know things like communication and collaboration. And in addition to that, through a partnership with um, the White House and the New York Public Library and the Digi Digital Public Library of America, we have the Open eBooks platform. And that is a platform that is absolutely free for everyone registered in our network where you can share codes so that all of your families have access to hundreds and hundreds of free, it's sort of a lending library, of um, digital books. And so the way that would work is you would register, you would click on the open ebooks icon, and then you would submit a request for the number of codes. So do you want um, 20 codes for all the kids in your after school program, or do you want 200 codes to make sure every child in your housing community um, has access? And then you'll get a follow-up from us so that each individual family has their own individual code that they can use on up to four devices. And each book is um, its sort of like a checkout library system. If once a family selects a book, they can read it on, 
um, a multitude of devices, so maybe a tablet or, an, or a phone if they don't have um, laptop computers at home. And um, the books are available, I want to say, for 45 days at a time. And then they get automatically returned. So there are no fees, there are no charges. Um, and so that's another one of our free resources that's immediately accessible. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to present the resources at First Book. Um, there's another question about um, shipping and handling. So I'm just going to repeat that if you order more than 75 books from the marketplace, $75 worth. Sorry, $75 yeah. worth, yeah. you get yeah. um, <laughs> free shipping. So yes, that's correct. It would apply for this opportunity as well. Yes, it absolutely would. And um, yes, I was just going to say our second to last slide here. Um, again, you'll see that the registration link on the bottom, firstbook.org slash HUD. And we just invite everyone who is not registered to register through that link. Um, so that way we're able to ensure that you do gain access to, uh, to, the, to the resources provided here. But you also have, excuse me, the resource provided that we discussed during this webinar, but also to have access to our resources on an ongoing basis um, to ensure that you have the resources that you need for your program. And uh, the last slide here, you'll see so my contact information is on the left. Uh, that's my email address. Please feel free to email me if you do have any questions in regards to any uh, programs that you're looking to do or anything where you're looking to have like a, you know, any programs that you're looking to do, and we can definitely talk about that. And on the right, you'll see the contact information for our member services team. And they're available, like I said, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, if you do have any questions in regards to either placing an order, or your, or when you receive the email about your promotion code or anything in that vein, they're available, um, like I said, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And they're available and here within our same building and everything. So that way they can uh, get you on track and make sure that you get the access to those resources. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, once again, please make a note of this registration link. Um, the bottom of the page here, firstbook.org slash HUD. This um, presentation will be available early next week, and the email with the, with the promotional code will be going out tomorrow. So I just mm -hmm. want to thank everyone. Oh, Clarissa included the, um, the link in the chat. So you guys okay. can click on that right now and go there and register. And every person in your agency should sign out so that there are more eyes on opportunities as they become available. And I just want to thank First Book once again for taking the time to present these great resources for us. Thank you, thank you all so us. much for having us. We This has been a wonderful, wonderful call just to hear more about what some of you all are doing. And we look forward to talking with you all just to hear about more of the great work that you're doing in the community. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.